concentration on LED lighting in controlled environment agriculture, also as greenhouses. Uh, you on behalf of Outsourced Innovation, the primary investigator for this project, the University of Minnesota Department of Horticulture, Tens, and Farms, so the Department of Commerce, and the Clean Forest Teams. A uh, quick search, I'm your presenter. I work for CERTS. My name is Fritz Ebinger. Uh, is all about a clean energy future. Our mission to connect individuals and their communities to the resources they need by implementing community-based clean energy projects. And in this particular instance, a lot of outreach to greenhouse growers, store producers, agribusiness, and electric utilities. So it's a background on CERTS. It's a statewide partnership and collaboration between the University Extension and Regional Sustainable Development Partnerships, which is where it is, the Department of Commerce, the Division of Energy Resources, the Greens Institute, which is a policy group in the Metro, and the Regional Development Commission uh, down in the southwest corner of the state. As you can tell, they have a focus. <laughs> Uh, so basically operates on three different platforms. Uh, we help people learn, we help people connect, and we help people act. Uh, we learn through writing blog posts and helping people understand technologies through case studies. We create personal guides. We manage a number of web-based tools. Uh, we connect frequently with people. We host lots of forums and tours. Uh, and I have some communities, and we basically get people to the right resources. And then people act. Uh, we provide the CV grant funds, which usually come out in the fall. Uh, we do search based campaigns like this one, and we encourage other statewide efforts. So, this is Ebinger. I am the Rural Energy Program Manager. I'm here at the Extension St. Paul campus over in Borlaug Hall. I think it actually encourages people to. To part and engage in, in the sick matter. So, my kids are very much. So, here's it for today. We're going to talk to people that were involved in this project. A really background on asphalt, also known as satellite lighting. Um, I'll talk about the study setup, and then we'll get a presentation, which is about the outcomes and the numbers, and answer some questions or direct you to the right resources at the end. And a quick note, if you have any questions, please write them up in the chat window and we can reach them at the end of the presentation. And this will be recorded and be shared. And we'll also post the recording somewhere on the CERTS website. All right, so investigators. Investigate the most important people in these projects. Uh, the primary investigator was a firm called Innovation out of Illinois and headed up by, by Martha Carney. Uh, innovation helps clients determine the full environmental impact of clean technology. As new technologies that come on the market, making all kinds of claims and outsourced innovations helps substantiate or uh, mystify those claims. So let's evaluate all aspects of implementing revolutionary technology. They have a, a strong focus on lighting. Uh, the measurement and validation an approach that makes it easier for clients to understand products and make it at scale. So these are not just uh, you know, a grocery store, two grocery stores. These are large businesses that are thinking about investing in a technology you know, and that might reach thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars. Um, a little more about outsource innovation, uh, an idea of what they do. So they did a wonderful project with Minamary in the city of Benton, North Iowa. They basically gated the energy savings and, and leading characteristics of a project that they did. I think I believe it's on a river front. But they helped the limit unit make a decision about whether to go forward with the project. Our partner is the Department of Horticultural Science, um, just down from the CERTS office. Uh, they to discover, interpret, and transfer new knowledge towards improving the quality of life for all, with the problem of improving the productivity 
value of horticultural crops. Um, on this study, Department of Culture Science collaborated on the project design. Uh, they measured the plant responses and analyzed the outcomes. And I have to give a shout out to Esther really helped me work through the report and understand uh, plant morphology. So thank you, Esther. So Nico, who was the host? The host was a, a wonderful uh, Bangle Town Farms and Garden. It's uh, on a 100-acre farm with the greenhouse facilities. It's located in Minnesota, just 55 miles west of the metro. And the focus on ecological principles and land stewardship project. And they really made go of it. Um, if you tell, it's a real farm site. You can tell the, the rent crops they have just by looking at the bands, different color representative of the diversity of the farm. You get a chance to drive out there. And they had uh, gardens running all over the place. And um, it's just kind of a fun experience if you ever get to this. Farms are is a pretty smart business model. Uh, they produce uh, um, local vegetables and fruits, uh, farm fresh meats and plants. They sell those products through, through a community supported agriculture venture. And they've integrated their, their basically by selling it at a local eatery called Zaker Eatery and store that's just on Nicolet Avenue South in Minneapolis. Uh, so they're hitting their local sustainable um, try to which really helps them a lot. So well to be honest, you who are the funder for this project. The Minimum Commerce, Division of Energy Resources runs a program called the CAR program. Uh, I would be I would be remiss if I did say that this project was supported by a grant from the Minnesota Department of Commerce the resources through the Conservation Applied Research and Development Program, which is by you, the Minnesota ratepayers. Uh, CAR is part of the Conservation Improvement Program uh, for Next Generation Energy Act. It's been a wonderful pro program. And as it's known, establish energy savings goals for utilities to help avoid building new power generation, like electric rate increases, and uh, create a business economy run through what this does. If you think about a 60 watt incandescent bulb versus half watt LED bulb, you have a little bit lighting efficiency at 580 lumens for the 60 watt bulb and you have 800 lumens which is a greater light efficiency for the LED bulb. You have you know, some dust and so forth. Quickly what I'm getting to is that if we do usual and ran 60 watt incandescent, we could run 40 watt bulbs with 2,000 power station, or 282 million LED bulbs. Converse of that concept. Business as usual with the 60 watt bulbs, we would have to build seven more 2,400 megawatt options, which frankly is crazy. So the whole keeping Minnesota energy costs low. Uh, by be more efficient. So that's the big concept and why we're talking about saving energy instead of consuming more and more project. All right, solid state lighting. I know what solid state lighting is. It is a technology that does not use glass bulbs, does not use filaments, and does not use pressurizers, and it produces amazing light. So that's, that's the salesman angle. Uh, what it is, is what I like to call a peanut butter and jelly sandwich of lighting. Um, um, but you basically have two layers here. You have a positive and a negative layer. I think that peanut butter is my brain, but it's a function which emits light when a voltage is applied to the leads. The electrons recombine in these little things called electron holes and re in the form of the photon. So you have Here's your negative semiconductor layer and your positive semiconductor layer, and you have electrons actually pass this gap and then they clearly emit light. So the real peanut butter and jelly sandwich is that you can have peanut butter sandwich, which is kind of bland, sandwich which is kind of like eh, too sweet, but you together and that's where the magic happens. You kicking out there. 
high efficiency technology. Moving through the project, here are the media questions that I think people listening in would want to want to know. Will the greenhouse LED lamp save my business, my agribusiness money? And second, will greenhouse LED lamps result in the same or a better product? Uh, pretty much grants uh, that I've been a part of, those are the, the fundamental questions for people that would implement the technology. And generally, production trumps efficiency when the two are in competition. Um, so you can produce more, they'll produce more, regardless of what the input costs are. Uh, but focus on these two questions. Research objectives of the project. Uh, we wanted to determine whether LED lamps would perform in a controlled environment, sea greens, basil, Swiss card, and cucumbers, and say relative to the conventional lighting system, which is a high pressure sodium lamp. We want value of LED lighting, relative to high pressure sodium lighting. He wanted non energy outcomes for plants grown under LED lamps. So those objectives outline the scope of the project. We had identical testing environments. Obviously, you need a control and a test environment. So each testing cell was six feet wide, 24 feet long, with identical plant layouts. And they were the only variable was the light source. So as you see by that little pink tape, at the, um, that's the foot one of the testing cells. So it's about half of the project right, right there. The lighting. So they established a dark windowless facility. Uh, the tests were wrapped in black plastic sheeting on the inside hoop. And then the second time with white plastic sheeting on the outside hoop. And this, the white plastic was the heat. And the black plastic did a wonderful job because I was, had the chance and it was. Uh, environment, you kind of felt like you're in a roller rink, to be honest. Um, top one is the lighting test cell, the high pressure sodium test cell. So, here, and some which is the test cell, we had the Lumigro, which is a advertised a 650 watt LED lamp. Uh, the, it follows the ceiling trays were seven feet to seven feet nine inches. Away from us, and, and each test cell had an 18 hour photo period and seven to a timer. Mondrain article this is the Mondrain picture. This is the layout uh, 24 six feet about where the plants were. And the plants on each side, the 1000 watt high pressure sodium and the 650 watt LED lamps were placed in a locations in each testing cell. A little bit more about the actual technology. We had a 650 watt Lumigro. You can look at the LED diodes. Right. We had a 1,000 watt Earthworth high pressure sodium. This is the high pressure bulb here, and the, obviously the reflective housing the, the HPS. Uh, the LEDs were, were programmed were spec at 100% red and 100% blue. Uh, one edge is that. I tune the lighting spectrum for LED lamps. Uh, otherwise, you can have it even dense white light. Right? In contrast, sodium lamps produced does not have the tune capacity. Uh, switching to the LED cell, cell one appeared dimmer because it's LED direct light and they drop down at the ground. There's no ambient light that bounces around the room. Wind bulbs are omnidirectional. It's noticeably, noticeably brighter to the human eye. Uh, human eye, since we're, we're trying to uh, get some plants. Technology and the equipment. We have an electric panel to hold the lighting in the systems. Uh, the light systems were hooked up to a dent leap pro meter to measure the wedge power factor in harmonic distortion. And then XL2 had identical lamp mounting locations and uh, inlets and exhausts. And both cells set at an ambient air temperature for 70 degrees, and that was regulated by a digital thermostat. Again, we're trying to isolate as much as possible the difference between the LED lighting and the high pressure sodium lighting. 
So how do we light? Well, we had a 56 point light grid measured at three feet above grade in both cells. And then we measured elucidation at 74 hours, 4,000 hours, and 7,000 hours. So in other words, we measured the beginning, middle, and at the end of the, the, the testing period. Uh, solar light radiometer with photopic and scotopic sensors and PAR data loggers. And that's that machine right there. And at the bottom is the lighting grid and how measures are taken. All right, more on the design. And again, I want to substantiate how this was a, a true scientific test. Uh, control is the project controlled as many variables as possible. They, they, they uh, same water pH um, is well water adjusted to, to uh, water with just a touch of sulfuric acid. Um, the same relation. Uh, the identical soils used a uh, standard house mix, which is sphagnum peat compost as pine and bark. And, and if you want the soil look like, there's a nice square picture of the dirt right there. So, hey, never thought you'd like um <laughs> So, <laughs> cycles. Uh, uh, we have different growth cycles. They're each 12 weeks long. Cycle March through June 2014. Cycle two was September through November 2014, and then cycle three was, was the March 2015. And I want to remind folks that this was a West environment that was done on, on uh, artificial. So it didn't really matter what the growing season was. We, we made it as consistent as could be. Um, the test plants were basil, chard, lettuce, and cucumbers. And it pulls across the three different cycles. There are many basal plants, less car plants, and 36 cucumber plants to give us a, a pretty good, good uh, test group. All right. So now it comes in valuation. So we're going to look at some performance in the plant morphology. So, again, questions. So we'll, we'll read those at the end. Across board, we saw 44% energy savings in the LED test cell compressor sodium cell. I mean, we are saving kilowatt hours, which is always good. Input costs. Um, lower operating costs. They have a fewer. They have fewer electrons because they have had better power quality, meaning that the light handling off the electric grid more effectively, more efficiently. A good harm. There wasn't a lot of fuzz on. On, in the lights. Um, um, one thing, sodium fixtures failed during the project and needed to be replaced. Uh, a couple other things, if you look at here, you want to look at the operating cost per hour. So LEDs were operating at a cost of six and a quarter cents per hour, and how sodiums were uh, a little bit higher at 11 and a quarter cents. So it's a, it's a good difference right there. Um, using the depth of the meter, they verified that the wattage for the LED lamps was running at 579 watts instead of the advertised 650 watts, which is nice. And under that spectrum, the harsher sodium lamps were running at a little, little bit more than a thousand, despite their average value. Uh, the grid on the right side, you can see what the the, uh, what the, the cost, monthly cost of operating Hypersumes, which is along this blue range here, which is about then and the LEDs on the green range here. So the LEDs are saving money. Uh, how the, the lamps handle, handle it? Uh, well, LEDs started lower and then increased in their, their photosynthetically active radiation value. We'll get back to par in a little, a little bit. Uh, Sodiums, in contrast, started higher than depreciated. And if you look at these two measures, this is at the beginning, the middle, and the end of the study. But the times, their light value started depreciating. And then it's like it's kind of, that kind of a curve. For C's, which actually started lower, and then once it increased a little bit and leveled off, and look, it looks like the LEDs would last a little bit of serving the appropriate power range to the plant. 
perform light distribution? How did the lights? Well, I mean, um, look at this is the Rocky Mountains, and on the right, that's the Ural Mountains. I'm kidding. It's not the high pressure distribution. These are these are graphs of the light distribution with the cell. A high beam is on the left. LED lights, LEDs are on the right, as you can see. Uh, the high um, was even in the, the high pressure sodium cell. Uh, it's significantly brighter and produces more human visible light, and it's light that walks around the room. It's light also um, well, it'll bounce around the room, so it helps employees see to some degree. And kites did not distribute light as well as the high pressure sodium lamps. Now, some areas fell below the recommended photosynthetic active radiation levels um, and greater par intensity directly under the light, directly unimpaired to the high pressure sodium lamps. Uh, finally, what about the energy? So considering energy consumption alone, lamps win handily. Uh, um, the distributed and lower power values for LED lamps suggest something more than a one for one replacement restricting LEDs. And the LED fortunately had a five year warranty in contrast to the high pressure sodium lamps with a one year warranty. Uh, if you have the 20 year outlay, which is a good long way to look, the installation and the system costs for LEDs are a little bit higher. I mean, they're a little more spendy lamp. Uh, but if you look at costs, you're going to be saving. A, a good chunk of change, almost twenty thousand dollars in energy. So the savings for LED about two point one years, which is which is pretty good for any lighting system. Um, you know, uh, it would be a smart financial investment. But again, we have a question to answer. So first, media question: Will green lamps save my business money? And the story is yes, they probably will save you money. Your energy costs, uh, you'll have less operations and maintenance given the durability of the technology. But the second question, will the lamps result in the same or in better effects? The yeah, production trumps efficiency. So we're going to talk morphology and get into the basics of it. So for plant morphology, there's growth response, which basically measures uh, grew. Uh, what how was it? Did it have a good leaf count? Um, what, did, what did the health of the plant look like? Like, uh, so as an example, we have a you know one of a, from now broadly that's grown under LEDs as the designs on going to Mars. You know, it's a pretty interesting plant. Uh, growth responses. What did the plant look like? So the synthetic active radiation, which is the spectral way, spectral range of solar radiation from 400 meters that plants are able to use for photosynthesis. And about this particular image is that humans see plant green leaves, which is right here. The plant is rejecting light in the uh, reading the basically the sun is reflecting into our eyes, higher eyes as the color green. And they're absorbing the blue spectrum and they're absorbing the red, red spectrum. Which I, uh, um, we tune this to 100% blue and 100% red. All right, all two response, which is basically the assimilation, assimilation rate of CO2 in plants build tissue by breathing carbon dioxide and exhaling oxygen. So, produce, in addition to changing their light source, they can also add CO2 to their environments to enhance growth. Um, again, another example, we have the response curve for the University of Minnesota Deep Winter Greenhouse Study that came in 2015. As you can see, at a certain point, CO2 rates, and you're not going to get much more CO2, but it's a consideration in apology. So light level, CO2 level, and temperature all relatively to photosynthesis up to a certain level uh, of stress. You can add carbon dioxide and you can add heat, but not really add love 
that's going to make it grow. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming you're going to add water and nutrients to your plant, but if you say plant, it's, I don't see much of a scientific response, but it's a different kind of love that will help a plant grow. It's more about consistently caring for them. <laughs> All right. So how, how does this project turn out? So growth goal one. one. Uh, so the growth, the Swiss card and the lettuce, uh, there's no significant difference. For the bit taller under the high pressure sodium lamps. Uh, cucumber and all measurements and higher leaf count under the high pressure sodiums. Well, what about it? That's what we're really focusing on. All plants, no significant difference. Uh, about the carbon dioxide, so this would be both test cells. Swiss card differed only at, at CO2 levels above 400 parts per million. And the cucumber didn't. So cycle one, no uh, difference in the lights. So cycle two, Swiss card and lettuce, no, no significant difference. Basil, slightly larger leaf width under high pressure sodium. Cucumber, or larger in all measurements, especially under special sodium. Photosynthesis, light, all plants, no significant difference. And then photo response to carbon dioxide under both the LED high pressure sodium. It responds at 200 parts per million. So, so growth side into two, when the levels were the same, there was no difference in photosynthetic rate between the high pressure sodium and LED cells. Um, again, the response to carbon dioxide was the same under high pressure sodium and LEDs. So no news is good news. Uh, the trick is finding the nice E distribution of LED, LED light distribution and uh, the, all the plants are growing appropriately. Again, it gets back to that question about whether an LED is a one-for-one -one switch out with the high pressure sodium lamp. So one spread like that. Uh, so group three, cycle three, the project team moved plant trays one foot closer the light examine changes resulting from plants receive air photosynthetically active radiation. And there, I like to call the more cowbell theory. Um, we want what happens when we give more AR to these plants. Is, is, is the media better? Are the plants going to change significantly? So, little feral beard and nasty set of cowbell picture for, for you. Um, it's been the plants. Uh, for all plants under the high pressure sodium. The big number uh, leaf width was greater and plants were taller under high pressure sodium. But we, if you're moving closer to the high pressure, if you're moving closer to the LEDs and the high pressure sodium lamps, you're more plant under the high pressure sodium lamps than you would under the LED plants. And as you, as I mentioned earlier, warmth can, can increase growth rate. Um, um, the project team, one quick, quick trick. Does anybody remember the name of the plant in Little Star? So you think about that one. I'll get that. To, I'll get to that at the end. <laughs> Apparently we have a winner. Um, so three, uh, these images. So the high pressure sodium plants are on the left and the LED plants are on the right. If you look at this, it's a, it's a big plant, a leafier plant. So it's hard, same deal. It's a taller plant, a few more leaves, basil. So you have a different response uh, between the plants one foot lower or one higher. I'm sorry. So synthetic response to light and the high pressure sodium and LED response curves for basil differed significantly at all levels. I'll just slide in a little bit. For the other plants, there was not a significant difference. Response to light. Here's the basil. As you can tell, these all grew a little bit better in the LEDs. Um, to the left, about the same curve, nothing significantly different. Again, no news, good news. Fairly, and for the cucumber, fairly similar. So, so the response wasn't, wasn't different. Actually, I quickly because this wasn't really the focus. For the project, but based 
corresponded to curves for uh, 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 basal header, should say, and then the car cucumber and lettuce reaching the high pressure even LED responses to the carbon dioxide. So the light with the carbon dioxide wasn't really doing much. Back to the media questions. Will greenhouse LED lamps save my business money? Uh, media answer is yes, they probably will save your business money. Will green lamps result in the same or better product? Well, they're based on cycle three. Uh, so you say generally they, they perform as as sodium lamps. Again, production always trumps efficiency. So about um, you know the conclusion that LED lamps are they're more reliable, energy efficient light source. They benefit only placed directly below the lamps, which me probably going to need a, a more LED lamps than you would high pressure sodium lamps. So there's going to be a little gap between efficiency and actual light count. And this project and report concluded that there's more research needed around light location and, and the photosynthetically active radiation distribution that um, can affect on crop productivity. And quotes is not a good policy yet, yet with LED lamps. Um, I think about are you supplementing natural light? How many are do you need in your greenhouse operation? Have you spoken with your local utility about rebates for LEDs? Um, there is money on the table for those kinds of projects. Or it could be a little heat. I'm, I really want to thank you for taking the time to sit in on this webinar for today. And, and at this point, open it up for any questions that you might have in the chat window. <laughs> Chat window, the name of the plant, plant of horrors, three, two. That, and this, the blind, is original augury. Question, question. Nothing, huh? We didn't, they didn't like cucumber growth. They, um, um, the cucumbers didn't do well under any of the scenarios. According to the people that were running the, the test, so I don't. That's one of the reasons why I don't have any images for the cucumbers. Or um, in those, I can probably ask the Department of Horticulture if they have mapped out. But when I sit them about this, they said that uh, they could do well under the high pressure sodiums or under the, the LEDs. Leaf growth, what we're after, after for flowering plants. Yep. Again, that took to see how the LEDs did for sodiums. No, they didn't. It's a real sunlight. Um, one, one I had, as, I was, as I was working my way through this report, was what would have happened if they kept the LEDs at a kept a white spectrum for a direct comparison with high pressure sodiums, which also white spectrum. Um, you know, something about it is university and the community goes forward with trying to implement lighting in greenhouse. Yep. 
Any other questions? All right. Well, I think we'll wrap up. The, the, the full report is going to be posted on the Minnesota Department of Commerce website and a link to it through our website as well. And if you have questions, I'll get to my contact information. Right there. Welcome to contact me with more questions, and if I don't have the answer, I have directed you. So, for tuning in today, and we hope to have a wonderful afternoon.